It's the magic of math here, and today we're talking surveys of populations where we are going to determine if the survey is representative of the population, if it's random or biased, and we'll use our surveys to make inferences and predictions. Our objectives today are that you, the student, will identify if a sample of a population is a valid representation. You will also use random samples to make inferences and predictions about a population. The question I would like you thinking about as I go through the lesson today, how can you determine if a sample accurately represents a population? So this is what you're focused on as I go through the lesson. Here's our vocabulary before we begin. We're going to be talking about population. A population is a set of people or things to study or ask a question about. We also need to understand about a random sample. And this is a part of a population in which every entry in the population has an equal chance of being part of the sample. An unbiased sample is a sample that is impartial or quote unquote fair part of the population and a mathematical inference or prediction can be made using data from a sample that is representative of the entire population. So to make an inference or prediction from a survey, we want it representative. So we want it to be a random sample and unbiased, which means impartial or fair. As we look at this real world situation, we want to determine population versus sample. So we have Central Middle School that has 923 students. A random survey was conducted to determine if students' favorite subject in school. Every fifth student to enter the lunchroom was asked their favorite subject. Of the 180 students surveyed, 55 students selected math as their favorite subject. So from this survey, this situation that we've been surveyed, we want to identify the population and we want to identify the random sample. So when we talk about what's been provided, we know that there are 923 students in the school. 180 of those 923 students were surveyed. And of the 180 students surveyed, 55 students selected math as their favorite subject. So to identify the population from this real world situation, we know that that is what we refer to as the whole. Our whole here is our 923 students at the middle school. So our population is the 923 students at Central Middle School. When we're asked to identify the random sample, we want to know what sample, so what part of this population got surveyed. So the part that was surveyed is 180 students. So our part or our random sample of our population is the 180 students that were surveyed. Understanding that these 55 students were just a statistic of the survey. When we talk about best representation, we have the principal of Central Middle School who wants to know what sport the 923 students in his school like the most. So we're asked which option would be the best random sample for the principal. And we're given four survey choices to pick from. If you think you're ready, go ahead and pause the video, make your answer choice and come back and hit play to see my work. If you're not quite ready to go out on your own, hang out and we'll do it together. So to determine the best random sample, we're gonna consider each of these four. So all the teachers in the school. So if we talk about that, these are not students. The principal wants to know about the students and what the students think. So this is not representative of our population because our population is students. Teachers are not in that population. So this is not representative of our population and we're gonna eliminate this answer choice. B, the basketball team. Well. The basketball team has some bias. That's not fair. We know that the basketball team, if you're playing on it, you like sports, and you're probably going to tell the principal that you like basketball. 
So that's not random. It's not a fair representation of the entire population of the school. We already know they like sports. So we're going to eliminate B. C, every third student in the lunch line. Well, this seems random and without bias because every student at the middle school has to go to lunch at some point. So even if they only buy a hot lunch, it still isn't any bias. It's not showing it's fair, right? We are not, not only sports people go through lunch. Every student in the building gets to go to lunch and it's random because it's every third. But let's check D first. All the students in the school. Well, that's not random. That is not a sample of the population. That is the population. So we're going to eliminate D and our best random sample would be C. Every th third student in the lunch line. It's random. It's representative of the whole middle school and there's no bias. Now it's your turn. The principal of Central Middle School is making changes to the lunch options for students. The principal plans to survey students to determine which options students would prefer, and you're asked which survey method would result the best random sample for the principal, and we have these four choices to pick from. I'd like everyone to pause the video now, do their best choice to pick the best random sample, and come back to see the solution. Welcome back. So our solution, we're looking for the best random sample. So let's begin. Five random students from every band class. Well, band class is not representative of the entire population. That's a very specific group of kids. So it's just not random because not every student is in band. Not every student plays an instrument. So we're gonna rule out A. B, three random students from every homeroom. So it's random and it's student, every student has to go to homeroom. So I would say this is random and no bias but let's check the other two. C, every grade eight student during lunch. Well, that's not representative of the whole school. That's just one grade. So we'll eliminate C. D, every fifth student who arrives by car to school. Well, that's not representative of the whole school because many students, most schools ride a school bus. So maybe because they go to school, they bring their lunch because they don't have to carry it on the bus. Who knows? But that's not representative of the whole school. It's a very select part of the school. So the one that is the most random is three random students from every homeroom because that will cover all grades, all students, no matter how they got to school or what their interest is. So we're going to go with three random students from every homeroom. So now we're going to talk about drawing and inference. We have a team of teachers that have been surveyed a random group of students about their preference for doing a class project. Students were asked if they prefer to work as a group or work independently, and the results are shown in the table. So here's our table, student project preference, group or independent, number of students that replied to the survey. Based on the results, how many students out of 375 will most likely have a preference for doing a class project as a group. So here, we know that we have 375 students as the whole, all right? But we didn't survey all 375, and we wanna know of the 375 wanna work as a group. So that's a ratio, right? We wanna know how many students out of the 375 students on this team are gonna pick or prefer to work as a group or independent. So we're gonna set this up as a proportion. So we're gonna take and use what we get from our survey, that relationship, and use it to infer or predict an outcome. So if we go over here, we can see that we're looking for the group results as a group. So we can see that 16 students that responded to the survey wanna work as a group. We can see that in our survey, 16 plus nine is 25. So we can see that 25 students took the survey. So 16 of the 25 students surveyed said they prefer to work as a group. So because we're gonna say that this survey was random, right? It says surveyed or random group of students for their preference. So we can use this random survey data to predict or infer what would be the outcome of the whole student body? 
So if we use this as a proportional relationship, we're going to say 25 multiplied by what equals 375, and that's 15. 25 multiplied by 15 is 375. So what I do to the denominators, I must also do to the numerators. So we're going to do 16 multiplied by 15, which gives us 240. So we can predict, using the data collected from the survey, we can predict that about 240 students would prefer to work on the group project as a group. Now it's your turn. The student council wants to know if students would prefer an ice cream truck or a taco truck at field day. Students were randomly surveyed. The results are shown in the table. Food truck for field day and preference, ice cream or taco, and here are the results. Based on the results, how many students out of the 2,976 students will most likely prefer an ice cream truck? So I'd like you to pause the video. I want you to predict, using our survey data, how many would like an ice cream truck. Go ahead and pause. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Here's our solution. So we know that we have a student body, 2,976. Our random survey was conducted to find out how many want an ice cream truck versus a taco truck. So we know that we want to know how many students out of this student body are going to want the ice cream truck. So we're going to use our survey, a smaller set of data, to determine this. We're looking for ice cream truck. So in the survey, 119 students picked the ice cream truck. We know that 119 plus 31 is 150. So 150 students were surveyed and 119 of them picked the ice cream truck. So 119 out of 150 selected the ice cream truck. We'll use this to infer and predict how many out of the whole student body would pick ice cream truck. So we're going to change this question mark to an X and we're going to use the cross product property. So X multiplied by 150 is 150 X and that is equal to cross product 2,976 multiplied by 119 which is 354,144. To solve for X, I'm going to divide each side of the equation by 150. 150 divided by 150 leaves me just that x, because it's 1. And then divide, and we get rounded 2,361. So we can say, using the data collected from the survey, we can predict that about 2,361 students would prefer an ice cream truck at field day. And there you have it. That is surveys of population that are representative of a population, random and biased, and making inferences or predictions using our survey data. Thanks for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you have a great day and you come back soon.